Hey folks, Mr. Long here. I'm going to be doing a screencast about the ambiguous case of the sign law. Uh, I know this is a really difficult topic, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, lay things out in a in a what I hope is a reasonable sequence, and um, we're going to do some investigating first. And I've built a a tool, that, uh, a spreadsheet tool that you're going to be able to use to help you with your solutions. So first things first, let's look at the uh, types of triangles that we're going to investigate. So um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at four different triangles, uh, all with different combinations of opposite side, angle pairs, and then a, a second side in the triangle. So I'll just give you a picture, a possibility here. So let's look at this. Our first triangle that we're going to look, look at has one angle of 24 degrees. The side opposite to that angle, so it's angle A, the side opposite to that is 30, and then side C is 40. So um, that's opposite angle C. So what we're going to do is take a look at which possible triangles would this be. So I'm going to um, I'm going to insert some uh, text boxes here just to get some numbers. So we know that uh, angle A is 24. I'm not going to mark that on. We know the angle up here where my mouse is right now is 24. We know that side A right here is 30. Okay, so side A is 30. And then we know that... Side C is 40. Okay, so side C is 40. So when we look at this, one of the things we want to think of is, well, is that picture reasonable? So it looks like BC is definitely less than AB. So that makes sense, right? So side C, which right here, which is opposite C. So it does make sense. So would there be two triangles possible? Well, let's see if we can rotate that through and get our isosceles triangle and it looks like it so it looks like we would get two a pos it's possible at least to have two triangles right so i'd have my nice big uh, triangle around the outside and then the smaller triangle right here okay the smaller triangle right here okay so that's the process for that uh, it doesn't look like it's any one of these other ones now while we're at it what I'm going to do is go down and go over some of these ones. So um, in the second triangle, we'll notice that angle A is 24 degrees, so that's up here as well. Uh, side A is 40 degrees, this, or is 40 this time. So that's 40. And then side C, whoops, it easy. Is 30. So in this case, does that triangle look correct? Right? Does that look like 40 and then this one could be 30? I don't think so. But if we go over to this triangle, there's 40 and there's 30. Now it looks more realistic. So the question is then, would we be able to get a second triangle? Well, the only way we get a second triangle is if I can take this through its arc and then it intersects the triangle somewhere along AC, but I can't make a second triangle. It's too long, okay? So that side from A to B has to be longer than B to C to make that work. So it looks like we only have one triangle in this one. All right, and I'll deal with the other two later. So when you have this scenario here, you definitely, number two, you only have one triangle. Okay, so let's go through the mathematics of this. So this is the spreadsheet that's been set up for you to help you go through calculations. Um, what I'm going to do is go view full screen so we can see a little bit more of the page. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of information here, but let's go through that first scenario. And in the first scenario, uh, side length A was 30. The other side length, which I'm calling... Uh, C is 40, 
and the angle opposite was 24 degrees. Okay, so um, what I've done is I've set up the entire process in um, in a spreadsheet where so what what you're going to be able to do is fill in this 30 40 and 24 and then all of the calculations are generated for you so you can look at this and compare it to your own calculations so um again and i'm going to go back here just back and forth so this is what we're working on right here so side c is 40 side a is 30 and angle a right here is 24 degrees. Okay, so let's go back over to this and let's substitute into our cosine law equation. So side A is 30, side B is X, side C is 40. So the reason side B is X is it's unknown, right? So this side right here from A to C, side B is unknown, right? We don't know what that length is right there. Okay, so A is 30, B is X, C is 40, and then um, I have my minus 2 times uh, the other two sides, B times C times cos of A. Now, if you notice here, it says minus 2 times X times 40 times cos of 24. So in order for me to calculate that, I need to do negative 2 multiplied by 40 multiplied by cos of 24. And that becomes my coefficient in front of x, right? And then the other thing that you're going to need to do is you want to get the left side to equal 0. So you're going to have to subtract 30 squared from both sides. So you're going to end up going 40 squared subtract 30 squared. Okay, so and at any time you should pause. And, and I really think you should be writing down these calculations, right, for the, at least the very first one so you see the path the process. So you should have a picture of your triangle. You should have all these calculations down. Um, okay, so um, next step, it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify all of this and write a nice simple quadratic equation, setting it equal to zero, right? We're subtracting 30 from both sides so we can set the left side equal to zero. So we end up with this quadratic equation. At this point, what you want to do is identify a, b, and c in the quadratic formula and compare that uh, and then use, by the way, a, b, c in the quadratic formula is not the same as the a and the b uh, in the cosine, a, b, c in the cosine law, right? They're different uh, representations. a, b, and c refer to side lengths in a triangle. a, b, and c represent different positions in the quadratic, in a quadratic equation. Okay, so let's first things first, let's figure out the discriminant. So A is 1, B works out to negative 73.08, and there's C. Okay, so I substitute that into the discriminant calculation, and it works out to a positive. Positive discriminant means two solutions. Two solutions, in this case, means two different X values most of the time. Okay, so we find out that the discriminant is 2,541, and we find the square root of the discriminant. At this point, we're just going to substitute into the quadratic formula, or you'll use your polysolve, and you end up with two separate lengths, right? Two separate lengths. So we do have two triangles. So what does this look like? So if I go back to here, it means I've got um, the big triangle has, sorry, I'm going to go back. The big triangle has one so the, the top side length as 61.7. So that's that distance from there from A to C is 61.7. But there's also a second smaller triangle, okay, the second smaller triangle, which goes from uh, what I should call C prime. So there's that second smaller triangle that goes from here to there and back, okay? From there to there and back. So we know that that distance is 11.3. Okay, so we have our two separate triangles. Um, what I'm going to do now is, is uh, take this video. Um, hopefully, you can do all your calculations. You can put in the discriminant there, x1 and x2, um, so that you have a sense of that. So we've got two triangles, uh, and